Aloha. Welcome to the fifth episode of Maui Eva. In this hour, I will be talking about information, how to get information data to make decisions to do with electric vehicles. I have three guests today. Chuck Carletta, who owns a white Nissan Leaf and also has solar panels installed on his roof at home. Sean Stenschel of BioBeetle, who rents out electric vehicles. And the last section of the show, the last half, will be Margaret Larson on where you can obtain information online. Hello, Chuck. Thank you for coming to our show. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. Now, you have been teaching at Maui College for a number of years, more than 20 years. Is that yes. right? In business technology and other courses? Business technology, primarily. Primarily. And recently you were in China also teaching. Yes, I did get a chance to go and teach one of the classes at uh, Shanghai Normal University. Oh, wonderful. So tell me, which came first, the EV or the PV for you? Well, um, about four years ago, we got a photovoltaic array set up on our house. And we had a, a longer range plan to add more capacity to it later for an electric vehicle. So we had about three years of experience with the photovoltaic, um, taking care of our needs, our electrical needs for our home. And then we purchased an electrical vehicle last uh, August and drove it for a few months. And then we added some more photovoltaic panels so that we could charge the, the vehicle. So here's your house. This is in, in Kula, is that right? Yes. And um, I see a lot of photovoltaic panels. Um, the ones on the right are the PVs and the, one in the, the ones in the middle, that's for hot water. That's is hot that... water, yes. Right, so you have 16 PV panels. Uh, and does that satisfy all your energy needs? The 16 panel array that you see there? Yes is a three kilowatt array. Uh -huh. And that generates, in, in Kula, it generates about 11 kilowatt hours of electricity a day on the average. And our car, with the driving that we Here's do from car. Kula, uh -huh. uh, uses about 10 kilowatt hours a day. So we, we designed the system so that we would overproduce a little bit and have uh, plenty of electricity to, to charge the car. So since August, you've been driving this zero emission car, 100% electric, and powering mainly from home. Is that right? From your PV? Yes. Uh, we've rarely ever used a charging station besides the one at our house. Right. So let's see. You drive the Leaf an average of 31 miles a day. Now, I understand you kept uh, meticulous records of each trip, each charge. Is that right? Yes. And what was the purpose of that? Well, when, uh, when my wife and I decided to uh, buy the electric car, we, we see ourselves as kind of pioneers because this is sort of new territory and, and we felt like uh, we would want to share the information. We're particularly interested in sharing it with our children and grandchildren and uh, with others that are interested. So we thought if we kept good, accurate records, that would make it easier to share the information with others. So that's interesting. First, you started with PVs. How many panels uh, four years ago? Well, the initial array is also on the slide, the next slide. OK, this yeah. one. Oh, these are the initial arrays. That was the initial the array. And that's a, that's a two kilowatt array. Mm -hmm. And it, it generates um, about nine kilowatt hours a day in mm -hmm. Kula. And that covers the needs that we have for electricity in our in our home. Mm. You also see that we have a solar hot water heater, so we don't have hot water using. We're not using electricity for hot water. So we have uh, we're conservationists in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we had a relatively low electric bill to start with, and uh, these panels uh, basically offset that. Wonderful. So let's see. You also have some data regarding um, how much it costs you. So, I mean, how many years did oh, it take to, to pay off the PV oh, the, panels? the panels and all of that? I didn't put any, any numbers in for uh -huh. that, but I can give you some rough ideas. Yeah, so. that would be great. 
Uh, the one that's freshest in my mind is the last one where we just added the 16 panels for mm -hmm. the car. It's amazing, you know, how little it actually cost after all of the tax rebates and yeah. things like that. Yeah, the, the system was put in by a company called RZ Electric, a fellow Roland Zeitler, uh, who's the man manager of the company. He also lives in Kulakai near us. And um, the system cost about $17,000. But we actually ended up only paying about 5000 out of pocket after we got all of the tax credits and rebates back for the system. Wow. So it's a relatively small investment. And I don't have exact numbers, but uh, we're going to pay that system off in the savings for gasoline over probably about six or seven years. So basically, you started with 12 panels that paid for the energy usage of the house and then you add four years ago you did that and then you added 16 yes. more panels to cover your nissan leaf so altogether you have 28 panels and that's going to be paid off in a few years from yes. the sa effective savings from not using gasoline yes and electricity for and the, electricity the house, yeah. oh that's right so can i ask what is your bill per month what is your electric bill well, per month? The, um, the two systems are on a program called net metering with uh -huh. Maui Electric Company. And so the minimum bill that you can get if you use zero electricity from them is about $18 a month. And that's basically what our electric bill is. It's just a flat $18 a month. You pay $18 a month and for it, all your electricity needs and for powering your car, your, car, your electric yeah. car. That's right. it. That's it, yeah. That's it, pretty good. One, once you get over the initial investment. The investment, of course, is significant. Um, right. Not everybody has a place to install panels or has the money to do it. So mm -hmm. we feel like we're fortunate in that regard. But let me ask you this. Um, besides the dollars and the numbers, are there any other differences? I mean, benefits? I mean, consciousness and driving... Uh, Anything? Well, that's a good question. The, um, the original idea and the original reason that we wanted to get the car, and actually the, the hot water heater and the solar panels as well, it has to do with global warming. We're, we're very concerned about global warming, the use of fossil fuels, the dependency on diesel in Maui County to generate electricity. And in addition to the problem with global warming, there's the problem of wars in the Middle East. Um, all of the wars in the Middle East have to do with oil. There's, there's no question about that. And it's a scarce resource that's going to be fought over more and more until we can kick the habit. We're addicted to oil and we mm -hmm. need to get unaddicted. So, you know, having um, photovoltaic arrays that can use basically sunlight to generate energy and then making use of that energy in our home and in our travels mm -hmm. is a small way that we can do something positive, you know, to um, help solve the problem of global warming. And to this is wonderful. So, progress. Chuck, you're basically saying that you are living your philosophy. You are a living example of how you're weaning off the dependence on oil and using the sunlight to power your home and your car. Yeah, that's that's basically it. And, Wonderful. Um, and you pay, and Chuck pays only $18 a month. What we're going to do now is introduce Sean Stenschel, who also has a Leaf, and uh, more recently another car. And we'll talk to him about how he is also helping uh, to wean us off dependence on oil. Great. All right. We'll be back right after this. Kenana mai nei o ko ya muse TV kapuna vele kiwi o kikula nui o Maui. The Bachelor of Applied Science in Engineering Technology at UH Maui College provides curriculum and training in electronics, computers, optics, remote sensing, and other technologies. Always messed with video games and televisions and computers. 
So it was always something I really wanted to work with, you know, throughout my life. I always had a fascination with electronics. And then because I was in the associate's degree, that also like motivated me to do the bachelor's degree. This degree prepares graduates to be productive professionals who can make meaningful contributions to industry in Maui County, the state of Hawaii, and the world. Well, I especially like the hands-on experience that we get and the hands-on learning that we receive. You don't need to leave home to do it. For me, it means that it's affordable. I can stay here on Maui. If you would like more information on how to apply to this program, call the Educational Opportunity Center at 984-3286 or visit us online at maui.hawaii.edu. Welcome back to Maui Eva. Earlier, we heard from a PV owner who became an EV owner. I would like to now introduce Sean Stenschel, owner of BioBeetle, the first car rental agency on Maui that's renting out an EV. Sean, welcome to Maui Eva. Thank you. Now, you're the first car rental agency to rent out electric vehicles, is that right, on Maui? Yes, it is. When, when did that happen? When was the first time an EV was made available to Maui residents and visitors? Well, we got our Nissan LEAF in uh, September, September 7th of uh, 2011. Right. And before that, you had other kinds of uh, vehicles, or still do, right? Yeah, yeah. We are, most of our cars are biodiesel, 100% biodiesel, biodiesel okay. cars, and we also have the Toyota Prius. Toyota Prius, right. And this is BioBeetle, the name of your company. Right. BioBeetle Eco Rental Cars. BioBeetle Eco Rental Cars. Okay. Now, um, tell us a bit more about your experience renting out this Nissan LEAF. What kind of people would want to rent that? Well, people who are uh, thinking about buying one uh -huh. um, and also people visiting Maui who, who want to be greener uh, in their footprint on Maui. And, and, and renting the electric car isn't for everyone, but there's definitely some people out there who are the, the diehards who really want to right. make a difference. And back in September last year, there were only a couple of charging stations available to the public. Right. Yeah, I, I think it was the one at uh, Mary at Wailea available back then? No, actually, not uh, in September there were none. None? Uh, the Marriott was November. November, okay. So where could they plug in back then, September? Well, they'd year? have to plug in where they're staying at. Right. Uh, which is what they did. Um, so, so, so basically, I understand you had to go out and find where they could plug in, which um, accommodations would allow that. Or, or, well, they, we would find out where they were staying. Where they were and, staying. And then we would call uh, that, those accommodations up to find out whether or not they would allow them to plug in. Right. And no one said no. So, no one said no. Yeah. Okay. So this is level one, the, right. the normal outlet. Yes, yeah, so the car comes with a, a charger that you plug into a, a standard outlet. So any outlet on the yeah. wall, basically. So, and an overnight charge is almost always perfectly fine for charging the car back up to 100%. Right. And since then, you have... Um, you have added another car recently. Right, we just bought a Volt. <laughs> you just bought a Volt, okay, right. just recently. <laughs> yeah, like a week, two, yeah, week, two just, weeks ago today. Just recently, okay, in, uh, at the end of May. No, beginning of June, rather. So um, tell us, how do you expect the Volt experience to be different from the LEAF experience? Well, people won't, won't have the limitations on where they can go. Right. You know, with the LEAF, you can't uh, necessarily go to the top of Haleakala. Mm -hmm. You can't go to Hana and back. You right. can go to Hana, right. and we did rent to a, a person who stayed in Hana and was able to plug in at the bed and breakfast she stayed at. So oh, wow. That, that worked out really well. Okay. So the Volt is going to be a little bit more, um, you more. know, accommodating. Right. I mean, I just actually made a reservation today uh -huh. from someone who's moving to Maui uh -huh. next month, and they're not going to have a car here when they get here, So they, but they want to get an electric car, so they're going to rent the Leaf for a week first, uh -huh. and then they're going to rent the Volt for a week to find out which one they would like to buy. Wonderful, so yeah. it, it's a way to test out the cars before right. you commit to buying one. Now, on your website, you have uh, biobeetle.com, bio-beetle.com, but also you have eco-rental cars, e e sorry, evcarrentals.com, where you show these two cars. But also you, what you're doing is also showing where you can charge on Maui. You have a Google map with all the uh, charging stations on Maui. Is that right? Which you, you actually go out and 
give notes, like for example, the Kahana Gateway Shopping Center. You put down the phone number, the hours of access, you, you specify exactly how to get there and whether there's a fee. You keep this updated. Right, yeah, we want to make it as easy as possible uh, for people who actually take that step to rent an electric car so that they know exactly where they can charge up and what all the, you know, the variables where, you know, if, if there's restaurants or or shopping nearby, beaches, things like that, and, uh, and, and then what, what kind of charge station it is. Is it a level one, a level two, or hopefully in the future we'll have level threes. Wonderful. So no, you're not only a uh, pioneer in getting this information, so this is available online. You also uh, worked out some numbers. I asked you a question, I think back in March, April, if my 1999 Nissan Sentra were uh, an electric car. So it gets about 25 MPG and I pay what, uh, $4.70 to almost $5 for gas um, per gallon. And residential fees uh, altogether, um, the total amount I pay divided by the total amount of electricity I use is roughly 44 cents per kilowatt hour. If it were electric, what would I pay to charge my car? Well, on a level two charger, which those are the most common chargers, um, you know, somewhere between $1.50 and $1.75 an hour. Right. So this spreadsheet, you worked it out. Um, let's take a look. We start with cost of electricity, um, and Maui residents pay some of the highest costs in the country. Cost of gas, this is, uh, you got $4.70 a gallon. This is as of 27th of June. MPG of car and 25 miles per gallon. Miles per charge for the leaf, miles per charge for the load. Let's do a comparison. Cost per mile to drive the gas car. So you work out to be what? 18.8 .8 cents per mile for a 25 mile per gallon car. Okay, so when I'm driving, I see that I've driven five miles. I could roughly just multiply that. Okay. Right. And then uh, cost to charge leaf from empty. This is 100% electric, uh, vehicle from Nissan. Right. Uh, cost to charge leave from empty will be $10.56. So therefore, it's equivalent to what? 14 cents per, per mile. Per mile, right. So it's about five cents per mile cheaper. Cheaper. And that doesn't take into account oil changes and other repair costs that ah. electric cars don't have. Because electric cars don't have belts, right. hoses, Lots of things that uh, gas cars have, and then, you know, like I said, the oil changes. Oil change, right? Yeah. So it's even it's even better than that. So, and you have further several more things. You have the time of use EV rates. Um, this is basically for those that that choose to have this metered so they could charge from home. Um, Nine dollar nine. 12 cents, so costs per mile to drive the LEAF would be roughly 12 cents per mile. Yeah, for someone who has uh, the time of use meter at their house, yes. Right. You've also done analysis for commercial. Um, now, let, let's, let's go and talk about, um, because earlier we talked about PV and EVs. Now, you also have solar panels at home. Right. Correct. Yeah, we're off-grid even. We're not even connected to you're Miko. off-grid, right. So have you worked out how much it costs, roughly? Um, how, how, how much savings charging your LEAF from home? Well, by adding the LEAF and charging it when we, when we drive it to our house, I mean, it's, there's no additional cost. No additional cost. Because it's solar. Right. It's 100% solar. And this is where on the island? Your Haiku. Home, in Haiku. A very wet part of Haiku, by the way. And Do you get much sun? Oh, we get plenty of sun. You get sun. plenty of yeah. sun. And we don't have a big system, so we're, you know, our plan is to add more panels, so there would be extra costs there. Right. And that's why we would add more panels to accommodate electric cars. Right. Um, but overall, I mean, there's definitely, you know, if you take into account five, ten years down the road, we're definitely going to save money. So i like to now bring in Chuck Carletta, who uh, in the first part of the show uh, talked about uh, how much he saved in terms of uh, not, not just dollars, but also conscience, <laughs> the environment. Um, the main difference being you're on the grid, you're off the grid. Could you tell me what that means? How does that affect your whole EV experience, being on grid or off grid, Chuck? Well, <clears throat> we're, we're on the grid, so we're a net metered situation. 
which basically means that we can use electricity from Maui Electric to charge the car at any point in time. Um, and then we put that electricity back when we produce during the day when the sun's shining. So being tied into the grid like that is, is very, very convenient because uh, if we want to charge the car overnight, we charge it at night and we don't have to be generating electricity at night with the solar panels to do it. Right. But if, if you're off grid, it's, it's much more complicated setup because you have the issue of how much electricity your current, your solar panels can put out. And it takes a lot of current to charge the car unless you put it on maybe the trickle charge which goes over a long period of time. So there's, there's some additional issues when you're off grid to try to actually charge it directly from the solar panels. So when you're off grid, does that mean that if the sun's not shining, you have no electricity? Uh, basically, I mean, not, not no electricity, just a lot less. A lot less. So the, the limitations are how many panels you have, how many solar panels you have, and how many batteries you have. Right. And the, the batteries at our house are very different than the batteries in the car. Like the car, the batteries in the car can be discharged you know, to 100%, and you're not harming the batteries. Um, whereas if we discharge the batteries at our house to 100%, uh, that's not good for those, those lead acid batteries that we have for ah. our, our house solar system. So we're, you know, we're supposed to only take them down to maybe at most 70% discharge. Oh. Or I should say 30% down to, to leave them always to leave above 70% charge. So basically you have a lot less flexibility than than Chuck has in terms of using when you can use your electricity, how much you could use. Right now, yes. Right now. Okay. It's just a matter of, you know, we're going to add more solar panels so that we don't have those so limitations. So you don't have those limitations. So if you can add more panels, then... That would solve the problem. Yeah, absolutely. I also heard of this new technology where you do reverse charging. So from your car back to your home, the vehicle to home. Right. It's not available yet on Maui, but that would be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. Where you use the car battery as a storage yes. for electricity that then could be used to power the, the house. Yeah, I've read about that, but I've never experimented yeah. with that. Now, I'm curious, have you met others like you? Oh, definitely. Um, and yeah. well, you mean as far as not necessarily electric vehicle owners, but people who are, you know, who are interested in sus environmental sustainability and solar and things uh -huh. like that. And it's now, it's, now that we have electric cars, there's yeah. going to definitely be more people like us who can see the, the big difference that we can make. Right. Well, the, uh, the solar industry is doing very well on Maui. I can tell you that um, in the subdivision that I live in, in Kulakai, there are many houses that have large solar arrays that are similar to the one that we have. And um, something about this whole you know, issue of the electric car, which I think is really important to point out, is that um, as I said in the other interview, that our primary motivation is to be able to do something positive about global warming and also the whole issue of war over scarce resources such mm -hmm. as oil and things like that. In order to uh, make a significant change is difficult. You know, change is not easy to do. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a small change, but when you change from driving a gasoline car to driving an electric car powered by sunlight, it, it is a significant change. And things about it are different. So you have to be more aware of where you're going to drive, how far it is. Are you going to need a charger? Do you have to make arrangements to get the car charged? And so on and so forth. So there are, there are limitations. But on the other side of that, what you're looking at is something that's practically miraculous you really look into the physics of photovoltaics mm -hmm. and you realize that you know just those photons of light hitting those arrays that's all that you're consuming to charge that battery up and that those little photons of light that are hitting those panels every day generate enough power to drive a car with two or three people in it and luggage and everything else all the way up the mountain and uh, to me that's practically a miracle and so to go from from driving you know, based on oil and fossil fuels and all of the infrastructure that that takes to this rather simple system is, is a tremendous change. And I think a lot of times in the discussion when you get into the dollars and cents, is it as cost effective as this or how much is the initial investment, people really lose sight of the real issue. 
The real issue is can we do something that is significantly different than the oil-based economy? Mm -hmm. And the answer is yes. And the issue of charging stations is kind of a small issue mm. because if you have a facility to charge your car at home and you're, and you're driving a certain distance every day, you may not ever even need to have to stop at a charging station. Now that's probably not true of the rental car industry, right. but I can tell you that from our experience it is. We, uh, we generally drive about 30 to 40 miles a day and we always charge at home after we get home at night. We just plug and it in. And you've never been in a stranded situation? No. Um, I've heard a couple of stories of people that, that got stranded and had to look around for a place where they could plug in their trickle charger, but they always manage to get back. Right. So, so um, Sean, what, what are your next steps? Now you've got a vault in your fleet. You have biodiesel, you've got um, the Prius. Prius, you have Leaf, you have Volt. What's next? I'd like to get the Mitsubishi iMeve. Right. We're, ta we're talking with them, so that's another one we're looking at. Our goal is to offer the greenest cars there are, mm -hmm. and that's, that's what we do. I'd love to have a Tesla, but that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But, you know, there's, there, and, and, and as more cars become available, we're going to be looking at those. So people who are unfamiliar with EVs, they can go to you and rent an EV and try it out, right. basically. Yeah, it's, it's perfect because then they don't have to make the commitment to buy. They can say, okay, I'll rent the car for a day uh -huh. uh, or a week and, right. and, and find out exactly what it's all about. Yeah, but indeed, Chuck, as you said, the resident's experience is very different from the visitor's experience. We've got a lot more visitors than residents on Maui in terms of annual um, percentage annual numbers and um, visitors won't know where to go or what to do if they're lost and all that. They don't have a set routine. Um, they might be more adventurous, um, more sporadic and spontaneous than residents. Um, also residents and visitors don't always go to the same places like Residents don't usually go to hotels and hang out. Um, visitors may stay in hotels. So what do you think your experience as a resident, how would that help to um, promote and support the EV uh, rental experience for our visitors, for the millions of visitors that come to Maui? Well, one, one thing that Sean and I actually discussed the other day at the other meeting mm -hmm was the um, possibility of offering our own home charging station to someone who was in trouble as far as needing a charge. And Sean shared a website with me that, uh, that lists uh, places where you can go and people that you can contact that will let you plug in their car. I would be, I'm going to add myself to the list. So if somebody's up in my area and they need a charge and there's no charging station available, they could call me up and I'm usually home, I'm retired now, and I'm not paying any electric bills, so I don't really care about the cost. <laughs> they could just roll up and plug into my level two charger and go on their way after an hour or so, and that would be fine with me. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, is there is. a website? Is there? Well, there's a website that he's talking about, it's plugshare.com. Plugshare.com, one and, word, okay. Yeah, plugshare is one word. Uh, uh -huh. And then the, the map that we're maintaining, uh -huh. Uh, includes uh, the charge stations, and you know, if uh, if you want to add your house to our map, I'd be happy to put it on there as well, because that's very very nice of you to offer that. That's sure. great. Yeah. Wow, what a community. <laughs> right. So, well, let me. Uh, we'll we'll put these uh, websites on our. Um, uh, uh, west, website addresses on our uh, MauiEva.org page, so everyone will know. Um, I, I'm a renter, and, and I would love to be able to get get my hands on an EV, and also get my landlord to put some PVs on my on my roof. Do you see possibilities for that? Where do you live? Wailuku. That's a very good location for photovoltaics. Yeah, you get a lot of sun. A lot of sun, yeah. Yeah, it would be great. It would yeah. be great. I think for the first time, I think in May, um, Nissan Leafs are now here rather than you have to pre-order. When you bought yours, you had to pre-order yours, yeah. 
Well, we were going to order one, but then the local dealer actually just happened to have, happened one, to have one that someone else ordered but decided not to take. Right. Okay. But you had to order yours. No, that was the same. 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 The same scenario. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So it was a real hit and miss, sort of, you have to have your name on the dealer's list or yeah, but you not have to anymore. call up. Okay. Right. Yeah. This is really good news. For the first time, uh, if you go to Jim Falk Motors in Kahului, there are Nissan Leafs there for you yep. to choose and test drive. Thank you very much, Sean and Chuck. We, we just went into a wonderful discussion about PVs, EVs, and calculations, and this is all going to be on our MauiEva.org website. After this break, I will introduce someone who will tell you more about where to get information online. Please come back. Thank you. Nana mai ni o ko ya muse TV kapunai vele kiwi o kikula nui o maui Welcome back to Maui Eva. In this fifth episode, we're talking about how to get information to make decisions on EVs. I'd like to introduce Margaret Larson, a vehicle specialist at the Hawaii State Energy Office. She's also the Honolulu Clean Cities Coordinator. She will introduce the Clean Cities Coalition in the USA and also the Honolulu Clean Cities website, the Department of Energy website, and various tools and articles and information you can get there. Hi there, good to see you again. Um, my name is Margaret Larson. I work for the Hawaii State Energy Office uh, in the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Uh, my title is Vehicle Specialist, and I work to help to manage the electric vehicle program for the state. And I'm working closely with the Maui Electric Vehicle Alliance here. Um, and I wanted to take some time today to explain and show you a really very cool program called Honolulu Clean Cities, um, which is part of the U.S. Department of Energy Clean Cities program. I helped to co-coordinate the Honolulu Clean Cities and um, wanted to give a little bit of background about the national program and then we'll go into the program that we have here. Um, and in case you're, you're wondering of um, how this applies to you, uh, we're definitely looking for um, as many fleets and interested parties who um, have share the same type of mission to reduce petroleum and ground transportation. So the Clean Cities is an initiative by the Department of Energy. Um, it was founded in, um, in 1992 as part of the Energy Policy Act, and the Clean Cities program is a voluntary program um, with a mission to advance the energy, economic, and environmental security of the U.S. by supporting local decisions to reduce petroleum and transportation, and provides a framework um, for businesses and government agencies to work together. Um, the goal is to reduce petroleum and ground transportation um, by 2.5 billion gallons uh, per year in the form of replacement, reduction, and elimination. 
in terms of some accomplishments that the program has seen over the last um, 20 or so years, 25 years. Um, they have installed over 6,000 alternative fueling stations across the U.S., uh, put more than 775,000 alternative fuel vehicles on the road in, in the U.S., and has saved nearly 3 billion gallons of petroleum since 1993. This is a map of all the coalitions across the United States, and you can see that we do have one um, in Honolulu. Um, however, the Honolulu Clean Cities does branch out across the state, um, and so Maui is very much a part of the Honolulu Clean Cities, as is the Maui Electric Vehicle Alliance. Um, there are nearly 100 coalitions in 45 states, and again, it provides a framework for government and businesses to work together. In terms of the portfolio of technologies, like what type of technologies does Clean Cities work with, um, there's a variety of different type of alternative re and renewable fuels. Um, you can see here on this slide, uh, different type of fuel economy measures, reduction, elimination. Some of the ones that we work closely with here in Hawaii are electricity in the form of electric vehicles. Um, hydrogen, we're starting to work a little bit with hydrogen with the Hawaii Hydrogen Initiative. Um, as well as the Department of Defense is doing quite a lot with hydrogen. Um, and those are, and, and of course, biodiesel um, and um, biofuels. In terms of fuel economy, uh, we definitely promote fuel efficient vehicles, hybrids, or just vehicles that have a higher miles per gallon. Um, in terms of reduction, we promote reducing vehicle miles traveled. And um, that also goes along with your elimination of looking into telecommuting or car sharing, um, car. Um, carpooling. Um, in terms of the clean city stakeholders that the national program works with, you can see here a list of, of stakeholders. Here in Hawaii, we do have our own local stakeholders, but we do sometimes work with some of larger uh, corporations such as General Motors. Um, Honolulu Clean Cities is directly aligned to support the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative transportation goals. And I was just mentioning some of the areas that we focus on, um, electric vehicles, reducing vehicle miles traveled, expanding the use of renewable fuels for transportation. So you can see kind of on, the on this list how the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative transportation goals line up um, in terms of trying to meet a 70% clean uh, transportation goal by 2030, um, which is uh, reducing to 385 million gallons a year by 2030. So this kind of gives a breakdown of how many million gallons a year you'll be using per the type of technology. Um, these are targets, they're not um, projections, and the targets are very aggressive um, and reflecting really the transformational change that is going to be needed to meet our overall Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative goals. The Honolulu Clean Cities was designated back in 1995. The State Energy Office as well as the City and County of Honolulu have been active members since back in the 90s. Um, the, we have a local, stake, uh, local network of stakeholders that come together to share updates and news and events, opportunities, uh, what's going on within their individual sectors as it pertains to clean transportation. Some of the partners that we currently have and kind of our strategic stakeholders, whatnot, um, are DBED, the State Energy Office, US EPA, um, as well as the Department of Energy. Uh, the City and County of Honolulu, I mentioned, Maui Electric Vehicle Alliance, Pacific Biodiesel, General Motors, um, the Department of Defense, and there's a list of others. Clean Cities is a very cool program because it gives us a direct link in collaboration with federal agencies such as the Department of Energy and um, the EPA, uh, as well as the National Energy Labs, um, and a connection to the national network of coalitions to work on project collaboration, find out what's going on in different areas, um, help to answer questions on different clean um, transportation technologies. And it's a very well-established program. Um, here in Hawaii, our um, Honolulu Clean Cities acts as a, or we are a nonprofit. Um, and I helped a coordinator out of the state energy office, but it is a, no, a nonprofit. Um, the primary focus of Clean Cities is really working with fleets um, or or, or like corporations or whatnot to help to reduce petroleum within the different organizations. We are starting to work closely um, with the public here in Hawaii on an individual basis. The national program is designed to, more, to work closer with larger groups. Um, however, here in Hawaii, we don't have 
um, the large fleets as the mainland has, and our biggest fleet really are our you know general public and our rental car fleets. Um, so we are starting to work closely with the general public. Um, just wanted to let's see. Um, was mentioning that the Clean Cities program does directly align with our Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative goals. Some of the projects that the Clean Cities Honol um, program here in Honolulu um, in the state have worked on. Um, currently, there's a um, there's a grant that we're working on with the Maui Electric Vehicle Alliance, um, which is a grant. Um, that sparked to create the, the alliance. Um, and Honolulu Clean Cities is doing a small portion of that grant through writing a lessons learned case study of uh, commercial sites on Oahu who have put in charging stations and some of the lessons that they've learned um, along the way. And hopefully that re report will really help guide um, other counties and other site hosts as they're um, learning and, and as they're installing charging stations. So it'll, it could act as a guide. Um, other programs that the Honolulu Clean Cities is working on or, or grants um, are a couple from the US EPA. Um, one we're still working on is the Hawaii Diesel Initiative Project. That's out of the EPA's Diesel Emissions Reduction Act, um, which we're working closely with the bus, um, with the city and county of Honolulu to put biofuels in the bus um, biodiesel, uh, working closely with Pacific Biodiesel. And then there was one from a few years ago, back in 2007, that was a report um, that was funded under the US EPA to look into biodiesel for um, from fuel crops in Hawaii. Um, in terms of what else the Honolulu Clean Cities and the Clean Cities program can do, I mentioned it's a really great network opportunity to work with the other coalitions and really work with the DOE, but the tools and resources that are available with the Clean Cities program are super helpful. Um, if you are interested in clean transportation, if you're looking to buy a car and you wanna know um, what type of car is going to be most economical for your pocketbook or more, most fuel efficient to help um, you know, meet our Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative standards. So I wanted just to go through some of the web resources. There's three main websites that are packed full of information. Um, one is the Department of Energy's Clean City website. Um, the next is the uh, Department of Energy's um, Alternative Fuel and Advanced Data Center, AFDC website. And the last one is the fueleconomy.gov. So I wanted just to get into some of those. I'm gonna kind of fly through these slides. Um, and then I was gonna just show you on the internet of um, some of the areas that I use closely, um, some of the different web pages or whatnot, um, links that I find most useful. Um, the Clean Cities website has a plethora of information in terms of newsletters and um, handouts about each different technologies. Um, as well as a whole bunch of amazing um, things that I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, talks about financial opportunities, so if you want to know what type of grants or funding is available in any state or here in Hawaii, um, or on the um, federal, federal side, what type of grants or tax credits or whatnot are available, there's a link for that. So you can go and check that out. Just a bunch of information resources. Again, there's a lot of publications that are out there. Um, there's a Clean Cities TV YouTube site that has some pretty cool uh, videos that have some training. So if you're looking to put in an electric vehicle charging station, there's a couple videos on there for that other coalitions have put together that you can take a look at. Um, and then bring, this brings us to the other website, uh, which is equally as cool, the Alternative Fuels and Advanced Vehicle Data Center, AFDC. Um, that has whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the alternative fuel station locator is very helpful when you're looking to find charging stations here in Hawaii or, um, by, or stations that offer biodiesel, for instance. Um, and I'll show you how that works, but you basically go and you put in your zip code and, and where you want to look and it brings up the charging stations. The state energy office as a partner works close, closely with the Department of Energy to give them those stations basically as, as inputs of, of what's going on. Um, the other features that that awesome website has are a list a lot of the incentives and laws. So some of the laws that I mentioned um, just previously on the other presentation uh, will be up on that website. Um, a, a lot of like cost comparisons, different tools, calculators to see how would you compare an electric vehicle to your internal combustion engine vehicle, so your regular gas vehicle. Um, 
and just a lot of really cool stuff. Alternative fuel price report. This kind of gets a little bit into more like if you're really a data person, you want to get a whole lot of information or if you're doing a school project, this is a really cool site to go to as well. Um, just shows you where the different states and coalitions rank up in terms of the fuel prices and gives you kind of a, um, a, a, a graph of, of, of where we are in terms of the alternative fuel prices here in the U.S. Um, I mentioned the incentives and laws. Um, I mentioned the fuel, fueling station locator. That's a, it's a really helpful um, site. Um, it goes onto Google so you can put in where you're at and then the, the site of, or the fueling station of where you're going to be and how long it's going to take you to get there or whatnot. Um, fueleconomy.gov um, is a site that helps to show all the vehicles that are um, that are offered by the auto manufacturers, um, not only fuel economy leaders, but just any car that's on the road that's available. Um, you can pull it up and you can get all the stats about the vehicle in terms of basically anything, um, the miles per gallon, the EPA ratings, um, and then you can compare it to the car that you might want to buy. Um, and there's, if you kind of get into the weeds with that site, you can actually put in Hawaii specific numbers um, in terms of like our kilowatt hours or um, our other price of gas. A lot of times these sites will put in averages that don't necessarily apply to Hawaii because we're so unique out here. Um, but these sites do uh, give you the, the availability to put in your Hawaii specific numbers. You just gotta kind of look for those, um, the special little links. So you gotta get into the weeds a little bit with them, but the, the features are in there. Um, in terms of the other features, um, I mentioned this is the cost calculator. So it'll, um, or not the cost calculator, the, the comparison of the two vehicles. And this is a page, just wanted to pause on this one. There's a lot of sites that are super helpful. Basically, just to let you know that there's a lot of information out there um, that the Department of Energy really is helping um, the states and counties and Maui Electric Vehicle Alliance help us reach our goals in terms of providing the data and the information that we need. Um, and will help you as well in terms of being an you know, informed um, uh, viewer and um, be able to identify what uh, opportunities and sources and partnership programs are out there. Um, I would encourage you to go to the Honolulu Clean Cities, uh, org website as well if you want to learn more about our local program. If you want to get involved um, in any way possible, please uh, get in touch with me. Um, we are in the midst of a rebranding right now, the Honolulu Clean Cities. It's been a very active, um, really strong program for in the very beginning of the, in the 90s and, and then you know quite a few years after that and um, recently we need to really rebrand ourselves and revitalize the coalition there's so many opportunities here in Hawaii for clean transportation um, so we need kind of all the help that we can get to um, really get that nonprofit um, on where it really can be in terms of reaching out to all of our counties and, and the folks that are out there um, and I wanted to then um, these are just some sites those are basic ones, but um, here's my details. Um, you can reach me via email. It's the best way, margaret.s.larson at dbed.hawaii.gov. I do work for the State Energy Office, um, and I, I work closely with the Honolulu Clean Cities uh, program as it's a great resource and tool for me to help reach the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative transportation goals. Um, so if, if I just have a second here, I wanted to maybe show you a couple of the internet sites. Um, that I find really useful. useful. So this is the Honolulu Clean Cities website. Um, you can kind of navigate through the different technologies that are here in Hawaii, um, the national program that'll give you a direct link to the national program, um, our different programs. You can kind of navigate through here. This one's an easy self-explanatory one. Um, in terms of going to the national program, we'll just click on that. And then you click on this Clean Cities. Um, you can also Google Clean Cities, and it will it will come up to the Department of Energy site. Um, so this one is, is what I was mentioning before. Like if you click on financial opportunities, it'll bring up what's going on. You can find different uh, coalitions and and the contacts there. So if, if you want to know what's going on in California or, or wherever, um, the information resources is. Um, 
is called the publications one I wanted to show you. Um, we have passed out some of these publications at the Maui Electric Vehicle Alliance meetings, but just so you know where they are in terms of the website. Um, so if you go to the Clean Cities Informational Resources, then there's a, all these cool like one or two pagers of, about the different technologies. Um, and there's these really very helpful handbooks for relating to electric vehicles, um, whether they be for consumers, electrical contractors, fleet managers, public charging station hosts. And so you can click on those and it brings up the whole um, handbook that's super helpful. Uh, and then in coordinator's toolbox, what other stuff is cool in here? Um, this, this is where it says find it fast. It is kind of a helpful way to bridge to the next site that I wanted to show you. But I, I really encourage you to just really play along, play, play with this website because there's just a whole bunch of different information here. Um, the, so if we go to the Alternative Fuels um, and Advanced Data Center website, um, this has just even more amounts of crazy information that's helpful. Um, the alternative fuel station locator is a really good one to use though in terms of like where's the charging station. I know there's a bunch of different apps out there that are helpful and, and I tend to use a lot, um, but this one uh, is a site where I know is updated uh, somewhat frequently or frequently with real-time information that we have here in Hawaii, um, mainly because I, I help to give the information to the Department of Energy, but uh, I do know that it's fairly updated. So you can check um, electric, or biodiesel, for instance, which are basically the two that we have available here in Hawaii. And then you put in, um, you put in basically your, your miles and where you're at and whatnot. Um, and it'll, it'll bring up chargers um, that are available. Um, it won't really give you if they're available or not available, but they'll tell you where they're located and generally the, the price of the fuel or the price of how much the site host is charging to use that premium stall for the electric vehicle charging station. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at this site. And then lastly, this was the fueleconomy.gov um, site. Um, again, they have a lot of information about the different technologies on here. Um, the, um, the, the cost cal or the comparison, um, this one's cool, finding compare cars. So, I mean, you could really spend a lot of time playing with these websites uh, um, and, and you basically pick two cars and um, you want to compare side to side. Um, and so then, you know, you, you pick the model that you have maybe and then you pick the, the EV that you might want um, and then they'll compare the two vehicles. And then if you scroll down, um, uh, I don't want to take too much of our time today and, and get into all the weeds of it, but I really encourage you to, to take a look at this website. Um, if you have any questions or if you, um, if you have difficulties navigating, then feel free to email me or give me, give me a ring. Um, send me your, your phone number and I can call you and help you through it. Um, there's a lot of resources available on those websites as well. So I hope this helped today um, and I look forward to working with you with the Honolulu Clean Cities. Thanks. Thank you, Margaret, for introducing the Honolulu Clean Cities website, the Department of Energy website, and various tools online. I'd also like to thank our other two guests, Sean Stenschel, president and founder of BioBeetle Rental Cars, or Eco Rental Cars, and Chuck Carletta, who has taught business technology a number of courses over the years at Maui College, who owns a PV and EV, PV installation in Kula, and your off-grid living, Sean, in Haiku. Thank you very much for, your, your, for sharing your experience and also your calculations on what makes it work. Uh, break even, not just numbers, but also your, your environmental consciousness. And thank you. Please visit MauiEva.org to learn more. This was the fifth episode and we'll be back every month also on YouTube. watching MCTV, the UH Maui College Television Network.
I would like to go to college. I just don't think I can. I did. I did. We did. did. I did. I did. I did too. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. I did because of her. I did. I did. I did. We did. They all did. Call UH Maui College or log on to our website to find out how you can too. Kenana mai ne o ko yamuse tive, kapunai vele kivi o kekula nui o maui. University of Hawaii Maui College, the college on Maui.